I'm Corbett Wall with DV Auction, here with your feeder flash for Thursday, July the 22nd, brought to you in part by Nora Myson by Norbrook. Nora Myson 300 LA is a proven go-to antibiotic for a broad spectrum of cattle diseases and infections. It's readily available without a script. For more information, go to norbrook.com. The ethanol mandate, and, and that came out actually on Tuesday, and we were expecting kind of a big blow, but uh, the ethanol mandate deal was a, a bipartisan bill that was introduced uh, by lawmakers to eliminate the mandate that requires oil refineries to blend corn-based ethanol into their fuel mixtures uh, through the U.S. Renewable Fuel Standard, uh, which was uh, passed here uh, recently or last few years but uh, to the tune of 15 billion gallons per year. And you think, well, gosh, if they uh, eliminated that mandate, which was forcing the refineries to do that, which way they weren't enjoying doing it here uh, with corn reaching the, the levels that they've reached here uh, the last uh, year or so. Uh, but uh, that, uh, you would have thought if that that would have sent corn just tumbling down, you would have thought. Uh, you know, if there was any any fundamental to it at all, you would have thought. We know if anything like that would have happened in the cattle business, you know, your your cattle board would have been locked, limit down. But there is just so much play worldwide uh, from so many different players uh, in your grains and especially corn. Uh, what was new crop corn for December? It was up two and three quarters cent at five sixty-eight and a half on Wednesday. After that, news was well publicized on Tuesday, so we didn't see that. Now, would that be better for or worse for the cattle people? Well, you think. Well, if we got a little bit of corn uh, price relief, you know, you think that would sure make it easier. But on the other hand, the byproducts, uh, those distillers, both wet and dry. That's damn good feed. And uh, if you talk to the guys up in the Midwest, uh, they would just as soon those, uh, those ethanol plants be cranking, even though they're using up the high dollar corn, which a lot of those guys raise corn too. But that byproduct feed is, is uh, you know, about as good almost. You know, several years ago, we had some, uh, some folks from, the, you know, the, the big universities telling us that cattle wouldn't grade choice, you know, without... Uh, without uh, you know a corn whole corn uh, in their diet or in their ration and that was total bullshit uh, because we had guys that were feeding almost entirely distillers with uh, just a little bit of supplements and their cattle were grading just fine so uh, that's been that's been good feed there so it's a it's unclear exactly how that would affect uh, your, your cattle business your cattle feeding but you sure would have thought we'd have seen uh, corn tumble there, but I guess I guess they kept it from going up 15 20 cents, you know uh, On one day and it was just up two and three quarter cent But tell you what whenever you've got a big big pool of players in those grains It's harder to tumble it uh, with uh, something that comes out of nowhere You know where your cattle they would have just tanked you know it they would have absolutely tanked uh, Your cattle and feed reports gonna come out here on Friday your on-feed estimates of inventory as of July the 1st uh, uh, are expected to be around, that's the average of the analyst guess, is 99% of a year ago. Uh, your placements for June are expected to be about 94.2%. So we'll see, you know, after the, the big pandemic a year ago, uh, you know, we, we saw a big influx of cattle. Now we've seen a lot of cattle sell now, we've got fewer cattle, we know that. But uh, and now we're starting in on a new pandemic or the third or fourth or twelfth wave, I'm not exactly sure. But 94.2, uh, if it comes in, uh, you know, lower than that uh, on Friday, you know, that would be bullish. It comes in higher than that, be bearish, of course, but uh, uh, that's, that's a pretty uh, handsome figure out there to reach. So. Uh, you know, it, it looks like that uh, the numbers are going to have to be really favorable to make this uh, into a bullish cattle on feed report. But I haven't been paying that close of attention to the cattle on feed reports here for the last several months. Your marketing is 102.3% of a year ago. So uh, the numbers look pretty friendly, which it would take a really friendly report to be bullish. They're also going to have some numbers for the mid-year inventory report. 
uh, all cattle and calves are expected to be about a half a percent less than the same time a year ago. We all feel like we got fewer cattle, but uh, you know, usually that mid-year report's not a big market mover. Uh, if you looked all down the line, the only thing uh, a class of cattle that uh, showed to be an increase was in your dairy cattle. So, uh, you know, I think we all know that we got fewer cattle. We've, we've slaughtered a lot of cows this year, this summer lots of them and uh, you would think that uh, the cow market would have fell down well the cow market's been pretty darn good it's still pretty darn good and uh and when you see the guys in those dry places in the in the northern plains and further out west having a colder cows pretty heavy but still we've been able to keep the cow market pretty good and we've got good demand for cows through uh increased uh shackle space for cows uh, way out west there and that's had to have helped quite a bit but I got a lot of quotes to give y'all, so let's get to your futures market. For Wednesday, August live cattle futures up 27 cents at 120 and a half. We're starting to see a negative basis now because the Southern Plains cannot hold 120 for their fat cattle market. October up 55 cents at 125 and a quarter. Go on your back months of live cattle up 22 to up 65 cents. August feeder cattle up a buck and a quarter at 156.77. It looked like your uh, feeder cattle futures traders were expecting corn to, to really dump on that uh, mandate news too. But, uh, you know, we still saw some pretty decent gains in your feeder cattle contract. September up 152 at 159.30. Still really good demand for cash feeder cattle. A little bit off of, of the high point early last week, but still awfully good. Your back months of feeder cattle futures up 70 cents to up a buck 32, so uh, pretty good. Let's talk about your fat cattle trade. Uh, we saw a more significant trade happening uh, on Wednesday, and boy, these packers are really, really dug their heels in. They do not want to give it up, guys. Uh, you know, it's not like they haven't been making a lot of money all year long. You'd have thought they'd been starving to death, but. Uh, you look at some of your quotes from the five area feeding region, of course we don't get anything out of Colorado anymore, but Iowa, only 700 head confirmed. They're, they're not liking this, this lower market in Iowa. 700 head confirmed, only 2,000 for the week in Iowa, and uh, your packers are doing everything they can to try to get some of those fancy, high quality cattle out of Iowa. They're not getting a lot of it done. Live sales in Iowa from 122 to 124 direct and dress sales uh, just at 195 that's pretty disappointing nebraska 5900 head confirmed on wednesday that's 12200 head for the week uh 120 to 123 and if you remember last week we had a lot of sales up to 125 last week 195 to 197 now i'd heard some two dollar trade uh, but we were not seeing it on wednesday in nebraska but 195 to 197 traded cattle dressed kansas about 11,400 head on wednesday and that's uh, pretty much the only the cattle that they've sold this week almost entirely at 119 maybe one deal at 120 but 119 is now the market like i said we've got a negative basis there uh with you got your august live cattle future spot for uh, 120 just over so not only did your your southern plains guys lose a dollar in the cash market they've lost another dollar this week uh, on their basis with their with their uh, with their hedges there Texas 2700 head on Wednesday uh, like 119 like I said they actually had a deal at 118 like it was two weeks ago but uh, dropped off a little bit Box beef cutout values were mixed, or actually up a little bit, so I, I said mixed, they're actually a little bit higher, and we've seen them drop off, so maybe they've found some footing here, uh, and like I showed you on the, on the report, or on the graph, uh, on the visit yesterday, uh, you know, they're still higher than what they normally are, other than 2020 with the gouging, but, uh, you know, they were able to find some footing uh, you know, higher than what we've seen them for the last many years for this time of year. But choice cuts, 265.24 up 36 cents. Selects, 248.77 up 19. That pales in comparison to the losses we've seen earlier in the week. So it's still a lot lower for the week. Your slaughter, uh, that it's being pretty disappointing. And then at the end of the week, it's going to get even worse as we've got uh, at least one plant scheduled to be dark late in the week. 
349,000 through Wednesday. That's 11,000 less than last week, just 1,000 more than the same week a year ago. What else is going on? If, if I'm looking even more haggard than usual, uh, I've had a pretty long day on Wednesday. Uh, started early, uh, installed a broadcasting system in Paris Livestock Auction, uh, hung around there till they sold their in-house video cattle and they, man, they got along real good on them. Had some bids over the internet, but uh, the, end, uh, the guys in the seats uh, were, were pretty uh, brisk in their bidding and blew them out. But uh, still, it was active trade and I mean a lot of bids on there. But uh, Paris Livestock Auction on Wednesday, they had, uh, they had four loads on their in-house video, including one load of 820 pound steers crossed up pretty good. They'd be Beefmaster crosses. Uh, steers uh, weighing 820 with a 50 pound weight stop and uh, they, they bring 147.50 for uh, early August or two week delivery there. So awful good price there. I want to give you a quote, another quote that I missed uh, that actually come from Tuesday from Northern Livestock video. Of course the videos have been smoky here early summer and this kind of wraps up the early summer videos. Uh, we'll be moving to late summer videos now, but uh, off Northern Livestock video from up in Billings, Montana, the Blakeman cattle, actually from Broken Bow, Nebraska, just west of there, had early September delivery program yearling steers there. They were Angus Angus with Keneally genetics there. They were all natural, NHTC, GAP, uh, all the bells and whistles there, 138 head of them. Average 845 pounds at delivery at 179.50. Uh, we may have seen them uh, uh, maybe a penny or two uh, higher than that early last week. We're at the Western video, but I tell you what, that is a hell of a big sale there. And things are still really, really good there. And uh, they had a great sale at Northern Livestock Video, and congratulations to them. I was talking about that sale with uh, Feeder Flash gang member Larry Matthews and, and he did want me to mention that uh, he's, uh, he's in a terrible drought region right there and his drought stricken replacement heifers will be at Billings Livestock Commission in Billings, Montana here today on Thursday. So if you're looking for some drought out uh, replacement quality heifers, you can go on the Billings Livestock Commission sale there and get those right there. Let's talk about your your uh, your sales in uh, in in the in the barns for Wednesday. Your real time index uh, ended the day on Wednesday at one fifty two seventeen. That was up seventy six cents, mainly because Bassett had a big sale. Uh, had some Kansas sales that were stick outs, and we've been off just a little bit tail end of last week and early this week, but. Uh, a uh, pretty good run of uh, yearling feeder cattle and it, and it bolstered up the real-time index a little bit. Real-time index is running off and leaving the CME cash feeder cattle index mostly because they had nearly 15,000 head of, uh, of directs that, that dumped into the index on Friday. Uh, it was just over 151 so it's going to take a, a while to uh, absorb all them in our real-time index which is always up to date and current is running off and leaving them and it's just in the auctions with uh, competitive bidding and, and open price trans price transparency. Uh, let's talk about some of your big sales on Wednesday. OKC West, El Reno, Oklahoma, 7,000 head or nearabouts there. Feeder steers were actually steady to two dollars lower but there was uh, unusually uh, good demand for your biggest and heaviest feeder steers there at El Reno and those that weighed over 900 pounds and up and over a thousand pounds were higher as much as five bucks higher. Feeder heifers were, were pretty much steady there but look at this quote on uh, one of their best consigners there the Speak Ranch from Ardmore, Oklahoma. They had a thousand head in there at El Reno and uh, man they, those cattle were so good and, and were heavy and they really bolstered the market but 242 head 925 pound Speak Ranch steers bring 155.80. Pretty impressive quote right there. Dot City had a light run at winter livestock, only about 900 head, and they really couldn't call a market on it. But everybody in Dot City and Pratt's getting ready for the big specials that are going to happen in two weeks. 
got the King of the Ring sale in Dodge City. Uh, they've got the big special in Pratt. The Hall of Fame sale there. Uh, they're going to have the High Plains video there. I'm going to be out there and then going to be participating in some of the events uh, out there at the uh, King of the Ring special. So we're really looking forward to going on out, uh, going out there. And uh, Dodge City Days Rodeo is going to be on. And it's just a good time had by all. It's good to see a lot of my good friends there. But in Winfield, Kansas, Winfield Livestock Auction on Wednesday, look at these numerous load lots of yearling steers that they had in Winfield, Kansas. Man, you talk about impressive. Look at what those things are weighing, what they're bringing. But the biggest stick out deal on some really, really green black steers there, good condition on them that I heard. 80 head of 608 pound steers and fairly thin at 177 and a quarter. That is a big time stick out deal. What would have happened if we went way out west where it was really, really dry and the fires have kind of taken over like it has at Nevada Livestock Marketing in Fallon, Nevada there. That's not too far from Lake Tahoe there where the big fires going on and it is horrible dry out there. But uh, they had a, a, a bigger sale than they were expecting or I'd have been out there helping them. But John Hanger, he had to handle it uh, himself, but just loosened the cinch a little bit and just kept rolling. 68 head, 611 pound steers in Fallon, Nevada, still bring 165 and a quarter, and that's sure nothing to sneeze at. How about a sale way out east? Monterey Stockyards in Monterey, Virginia. They had a barbecue special, had a board sale. Uh, my friend Michael Smiley would give me the heads up on it. But uh, it, it was a good sale there. Uh, the Virginia Cattlemen's Association were involved in that sale, putting that on. Uh, my buddy Butch there, he does such a great job, and, and I miss him. I haven't seen him for a while. But on that board sale, they had a load of 825-pound steers, local steer, steers there from Virginia, bring $146. It's a lot of freight, guys. And then a load of 985 pound steers bring 142. So the big heavy steers out that way selling awful good too. But there again, Bassett, Nebraska, Bassett Livestock Auction had one of their big specials, 6,800 head. Uh, and in comparison to two weeks ago when they had the big barbecue sale that we talked about in length, uh, the yearling steers were steady to as much as $6 lower. And we've lost, uh, you know, we've been talking about that, or I've been talking about it uh, the last several visits where those yearling steers are off just a little bit, two, three cents here and there. And on a stick out, stick out sale like they had uh, on that barbecue sale two weeks ago, it's understandable that they'd be steady to as much as $6 lower. The heifers were kind of unevenly steady. But look at this report from Bassett Livestock. This is an automated report through Cattle Market Central. You look at your best tested weights and they were in the big heavy uh, grass yearling steers. 614 head, seven weight steers averaged 756 and all of them together with a weighted average price of 166.32. Wow, 795 head of eight weight steers in Bassett, Nebraska had a weighted average price, uh, a weighted average weight of 845, weighted average price of 160.59, weighing nearly eight and a half. Uh, very, very impressive. But over 1,200 head of nine weight yearling steers in Bassett uh, had an average weight of 953 pounds with a uh, weighted average price of 153.81. But as impressive as that was, look at these strings in Bassett weighing over a thousand pounds from a thousand to a thousand sixty load lots and bigger there. Very impressive and they sold from 144 to 152 and a quarter. And that's your Zach Chan top quote for the day and that's your feeder flash for Thursday.